Hello and welcome to our demonstration of student number planning in Alterix, brought to you by Billigent. In this video, we're going to show you the concept of Alterix and highlight how it allows you to address all of the challenges typically involved in a higher ed student number planning process. So firstly, let's jump straight into Alterix Designer, which is a component of the Alterix platform that's built for analysts. Here in Designer, you'll be able to design, build, and automate workflows. Beyond the Designer component, there are also Server, which comes with an analytics gallery for sharing your workflows on an enterprise scale, as well as Connect for overall data collaboration, report cataloging, business glossary, and data lineage, which ultimately surfaces the right data into the hands of the right people delivering quicker and more accurate and certified analysis. So back in Designer, you start with a blank canvas. And Alteryx allows you to literally draw and map a data process, all the way from what's supposed to happen with the source data that you're using and where it's supposed to come from, to how it's supposed to be transformed, to what shape of the output should be expected. And the great thing is, you can literally draw this process in line with what your current or target business process looks like and match up the steps that the data flows through. Now, to design these steps, we have a ribbon of over 300 individual icons called tools. And we interact in a drag and drop way, which couldn't be easier for non-technical users, meaning it's great for the average business user in any department. So, using a drag and drop approach, we bring them onto the canvas and connect them together to build a sequence of steps, which is called an Alteryx workflow. Firstly, I'll briefly explain the general concept of Alteryx and then show you a sample student number planning model with some of the process specifics. You start your analysis with the input data tool, which is a tool that allows you to connect to the data source. Typically, this can be either files, databases, or other sources like data warehouses or data lakes where you may have stored your data. There is a wide range of connection options for the files, starting from Excel, Access, CSVs, or some statistical files. For the purposes of the demonstration, I'll connect to my sample data set in Excel. And as you'll see, there is a preview of the data in the bottom window, and you can see it's a list of courses with some additional information about them, and at the very end, my student numbers split into domestic and international. Then I start building my workflow. I will start with a select tool. And as you can see, it already offers me the opportunity to connect these two tools together. The select tool allows me to select or deselect some of the fields or rename them. For example, I will rename my field called level to level of study. As Alteryx is workflow based, Every time I click this run button, this operation is executed and I see the results below. So you can see that the field level was changed to level of study. What's good about Alteryx is that each step of the process, you can see those transformations. So on the input, there was level and on the output, there is level of study. Now, my data set is not very clean. In my student numbers, I have some null values and Alteryx is very powerful in cleansing and passing these data sets. There's a data cleansing tool that allows me to do this operation. Now I can select these two numerical fields, domestic and international, and select replace nulls with zeros. Again, rerun the workflow, wait for the result, and see that the numerical fields are now showing 100% okay, and null values are replaced with zeros. You can also do formulas in Alteryx. What's good is that there is no special syntax. It's entirely programming free, and that's why it's widely used by business users. As an example, I can create a formula for total student, which will be a sum of domestic and international, and I will change the data type to number. Again, I run the workflow, and at the very end of the data set, a new field with total number of students was created. Given how often you need to be able to combine multiple data sources together, 
you can see why this is a key feature of Alteryx as it allows you to do it easily. Now, I can add another input data tool and connect to a second file, which is course durations. You can see it's a list of courses with some additional information and length of courses. Using a join tool, I can join these two together. It looks generally like a VLOOKUP in Excel. Based on some unique lookup value, which is the case is a course ID. So I'll connect these two sources together and again I run the workflow and on the output of the join tool I have my original data set with student numbers and at the very end I have the length of the course. You can also do aggregations using a summarize tool. For example, if you want to get to know how many students there are per faculty, you can group the data by faculty and select sum of total students I run the workflow and on the output of the process there is a new granularity of data showing me the number of students per faculty. This way you can easily output the data into reports. You can write back to the database or create files. You can even write back the data into your favourite visualisation tool like Tableau, Click or Power BI. For now I will create a sample Excel report, save it, select a sheet name then run the workflow and in my folder this is the Excel file that has just been created. Following these steps and working in Alteryx you can capture the logic of any process not only student number planning. This is also a self-documenting process because you can literally annotate every single step. Using the annotation you can describe the logic as an example the total students per faculty and this description appears underneath the tool. This way, you can document the entire process, which is very helpful when one user creates the workflow and others need to understand it, pick it up, and make changes to it or troubleshoot. So this, in a nutshell, is Alteryx. Okay, now that we understand how to build a workflow, we can look at a sample student number planning model. This one is a simplified one, using dummy data that we use for demonstrations. In reality, a full student number planning model will appear bigger, especially when you capture all of those different student cohorts. But it's still entirely programming free. And as you can see, you can make it fairly easy to read by following design principles. For example, using these colorful containers, comments, and annotations. Every university focuses on something slightly different in their student number planning processes or has slight nuances while some focus purely on the headcount projections or FTEs, others may be interested in the financial part, meaning what the overall income is, and then what the income distribution across the department is. So there are typically these differences across various types of processes. But generally, what you start with is connecting to your student records data, either using the extract or connecting directly to the database. The first part of the process is the automation of the data preparation. So putting in the historical data into the right shape so that you're able to calculate the progression rate, repeat rates, or potentially what the attrition of students is. All of these give you information about what is the portion of students who progress to the next academic years, who will need to repeat and who dropped out, and all of this on any level of granularity whether it's on a program level or department level, or any other you define. And once you have these progression and continuation rates calculated, you can then apply these rates on this academic year students to give you the forecast of continuing students. When you bring in your new enrollment numbers or intake targets, which are typically collected from individual schools and stored separately, then you have a complete picture of what the next year headcount projection will be, again, on any level of detail you need at the click of a button. When you connect to the tuition fees data set, you can easily derive the overall university income and go further into more detail to calculate the student load adjustment. Therefore, what will be the income distribution across the schools or service teaching or any other metrics you define. At the very end of the workflow, you can output the results of the model into reports or other visualization tools like Power BI, Click, or Tableau, as I'm doing here. 
And every time I run this workflow, these Tableau extracts are refreshed with new data and I have a sample visualization in Tableau where I have built a dashboard to help me visually see the results. That is headcount projections and income. Here you can see the overall headcount split based on the origin of the student, view of income per teaching school by level of study, overall income or the headcount split into full-time and part-time. So in principle, this is how you can automate the end-to-end -end process of student number planning and do what-if scenarios. There are actually two options of doing what-if scenarios. The first one is that you can directly change the input, meaning you can play around with your intake target numbers and see the results instantly. Or if you want to cap on the tuition fees at some level or assume any other variables. Alternatively, this workflow can be built as an Alteryx analytical app where you can predefine these variables. For instance, if I want to assume a specific future annual inflation rate on top of my tuition fees for some particular groups of students. So here, for instance, I can set an annual fee inflation rate for undergraduate overseas students only to 5% and then run that scenario, which will then again refresh those outputs at the end of the model and update the visualization so that I can see what the results of that what-if model are and compare. Subsequently, I can run different scenarios to find my optimal one, or indeed allow users to self-serve this certified analytical workflow. As you can see, Alteryx is very fast at processing workflows and calculations. It really takes seconds to process, and you can also automate individual sub-processes, like data quality checks, or the creation of data validation reports. In this example, I'm joining student records data with the course durations. And in the left output of the join, there are over 300 records for which I'm generating an error message, which means that in my student records, for 300 of them, there were no corresponding course durations found. And every time I run this workflow, this validation report is refreshed, and I have a PDF report in my folder which is giving me a list of all the courses and the corresponding error message. So now I can take this report and give it to whomever is responsible for the data input and ask them to fix it before I can fully rely on the model. Likewise, when I run the model with no errors, I can be sure of the veracity. Alteryx is also very flexible in making changes. So in case you want to bring in an extra tool, or you want to add some other formulas or conditions, it's fully dynamic. Alteryx workflows are built to match up to your organizational needs, and you build the model around 100% of your established processes, as opposed to changing your way of working to fit into a prefab software solution. This is a simplified version of the model, hence it does not include multiple specific student cohorts, but using filters, you can easily separate individual groups of students. As an example, you can then treat exchange students separately, or students on placements, interrupted students, or individually handle the foundation programs or intercalating years or research students. You can even define custom student paths to reflect how students progress throughout the study. You can see that in this case, the entire student number planning model was built into a single workflow but it can also be broken down into multiple workflows or a sequence of workflows where, after each one, you can generate an output or report and read that output as an input into the following workflow. That way, you can separate the data preparation from the rates calculation and the headcount projections for next year and then do future projections for two years on, three years on, five years on, or 10 years on, depending on really on what the needs are. The outputs of the student number planning model can then feed into other supporting analysis like campus utilization and timetabling to identify whether we have enough teaching space or staff capacities for students or link the model with student retention analysis, applications or modeling your institutional KPIs around differing scenarios. So this is the principle of student number planning in Alteryx. It's a business logic captured in the model, which is clearly documented and annotated step by step, and ultimately maintained by your team as opposed to being reliant on consultancy services. 
Thank you very much for watching. In case you have any questions or would like to talk to us about a proof of concept with your institution, please reach out to us on the following contact details.